Welcome back, everybody. We're in the new studio. Probably going to need a volume check on the microphone, but it's not actually a new studio, but some new stuff looking good. Today, everyone is thinking and talking about the ETF. Can't even open my news tabs without hearing ETF tomorrow, ETF today, ETF yesterday. Guys, I, I, I know exactly when the ETF will be approved, and I'm going to tell you in this episode, it's either today, tomorrow, the next day, the day after that, the day after that, the day. Okay, it's coming. It's inevitable. It's coming. But we're going to take a look at the charts, what the charts are telling us, and maybe if they are predicting an ETF approval soon. So thank you for joining me. I know it is Friday and you could be doing anything, but you're tuned into Tom Crown. So let's jump into it, guys. Let's take a look at the chart here, the old Bitcoin map, I've been calling it. We have the orangish, yellowish ascending channel that we have been in since October. It's holding pretty well right now. We have this green triangle right up here. And this is depicting the pattern that I believe we are in. That pattern being a rather bullish one, a flat topped ascending low triangle. You can call it whatever you'd like. Basically, I view the chart this way. When in the green, we are in this pattern and things are looking rather bullish, falling into the yellow is a reason for caution. We've discussed the possibilities of potentially moving down to the bottom of the channel, which we already got, rejections from the top of the channel, or in the really bearish scenario, falling below and rejecting off. That's what I think a real sell-off would look like. If you guys are on the bull train like I always am or on the bear train, um, there's really room for either thing to play out here. This is uh, so far holding really well. I'm pretty pleased. I actually was looking to hedge more and I didn't actually think that that was the play. During today, on today's candle, we have traded back into the yellow, but we're kind of fighting for the green in the pre-lobby you guys saw on the 10 second chart. Quite a little bit of upside there. And uh, that's putting us right back on the top of this channel. So basically, for those of you who aren't really chartists, that's uh, probably not many out there, fledging chartists, in the red, bad, yellow, caution, green, good, or green, go. And so far, it does look like we're looking to wrap up Bitcoin in some pretty solid condition. Let me look at this week. This has been quite a week. This has been quite a week. We have had not only a higher high, which took us to about 46. I'm losing track of things. This is so uh, incremental. 46K is the high, and we've also broken our lows here on this weekly candle. This is a, what I like to call, leverage smashing move. Basically, whipsawing out longs and shorts, and I'm surprised no one actually has talked about potentially a lower time frame diamond, maybe? I'm just kind of winging it right here. I just realized we did go from a higher point in our pattern to a lower point breaking structure. That does usually start to paint out some kind of diamond pattern, right? We can even see our highs coming down here on the lower time frames, our lows potentially coming up here. Volatility is compressing into the weekend. Now we have seen some pretty big Bitcoin moves, I would say over the last month, <clears throat> over the weekend, which is a fresh divergence from what we've seen, I'd say over the last year where price action, mostly sideways, mostly muted. Now we do have talks about the ETF approval today. That would be very exciting. That would be incredibly exciting. However, I'm not going to hold my breath. I keep saying it. I really think you guys should have some air of caution on the ETF trading, trying to catch the ETF, time it. I don't think it's going to be a really successful move. Here's what we do know. We do know that an ETF is coming, whether it is today or next year. It's, it's coming. It's inevitable. There's, at this point, there is no return. There's already money being invested. We're seeing new ETF Bitcoin commercials come out almost daily. I think Bitwise put one out, BlackRock, they would not be advertising if they didn't know that this was coming. I would put, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put all my corn on it, but I would bet a large amount of money that that is true. These big players are not just shooting darts. They're not just hoping to land. They know that it's coming. And if they didn't, they wouldn't be doing this. That's my easiest take. Now, People do have, I think, some expectations for today. Anything's possible. Could happen today. If it does, I would bet my bottom dollar that it will not be released until after the markets close. So I would say 4.30, 430 p.m. East, 
whatever other time zones you guys are in. Uh, after traditional markets close would be the only time I'd ever expect them to announce it. I have about 100% confidence when it is announced, they will not be doing it during market hours. That that would just be a recipe for, for craziness. Um, on Bitcoin, really quick, let's just take a look at some super low time frames. We had that sell off that was rather spooky from 46 down to 40, flushing out long positions. We saw $500 billion in longs liquidated on that event. Since then, price has kind of found a different rhythm, but has not really proven bearish. Now, let me whip up a fresh chart here. Not really proven bearish in my view. It was a nice, ew, it was a pretty big sell off, right? But I'm not seeing it yet. Uh, our lows here still coming up. Now you can even use your imagination here and see that that might not be true for long. Uh, even this hourly candle falling to that trend line. If we go down to low time frames, we can see it interacting there, bouncing off. Um, not the strength that I would hope here. Not the strength that I'm looking for. But we still are putting in these higher lows. Our highs are coming down and we're painting out what could just be a giant flag, right? Could just be a big flag. We were looking at very zoomed in price action after the fall. We were live. And I said, this is going to paint out a bear flag. I don't ever trust bear flag. I don't ever trust flags. It's not bear flags. I don't trust flags in crypto. They just don't seem to have a probabilistic edge. They seem to almost, I don't even know, always go the wrong way. And so kind of what I see this happening here is that bear flag has matured out and basically nullified itself. We're seeing a much larger pattern here. And maybe, maybe, and this is probably opium. This is, this is probably out there. But, but maybe it's just a really big flag, right? Whenever we're in doubt or whenever we have questions, we're not really sure of a trend. Always a good, always a good move to just zoom out. Wow, why am I getting pop-up notifications here on my computer? That's very odd. Guess I'll have to figure that out later. Um, could be, could be. The greater picture of Bitcoin is not showing any signs of slowing. Really, there's nothing negative going on here, but sentiment does seem to be kind of getting whipped back and forth. Since the start of 23, we've virtually only moved up with the exception, in my opinion, of this one March event where we had a really large liquidation event. And maybe that's what we saw again up here. Leverage positions are getting very overheated. We talked about funding, which I'll pull up in just a minute. Bitcoin long funding was getting way, way too hot to the point where it was unsustainable. I, I believe it's been higher in Bitcoin's history, but I don't think it's been higher during such market conditions. Let me pull up uh, funding right here. See if I got the green screen, green screen right. Cool, you don't see it. Nice. I mean, there's no green screen. I exist on the internet. So this funding rate up here was all the way up to, I think, 0.1 at its peak. And that was only a few days ago before the flush out. Since then, and this is my bullish edge, my, uh, my secret alpha. No, um, my bullish edge here. Basically, since that drop, since the flush of longs, we have seen what I consider bullish funding. Bullish funding being anything under 0.01. So we see Binance currently neutral, that's 0 0.01, but we're seeing these other exchanges slowly kind of dip into those shorts. And what that does is it's showing us that shorts are opening at a faster pace than longs. People are bearish or betting down on the market in perpetuals. <clears throat> and what happens is typically, this is what we see before a long or a short squeeze event that does bring price up to the upside. Uh, to give you an idea, the sell-off we had two days ago was a long squeeze event. Undoubtedly, uh, no matter what, even if the thing is going down from here, that was a long squeezing event. Uh, this move was very much fueled by perpetuals, and we can see that basically just looking at how much got liquidated on that move. Let me pull up the super chart. Coinglass.com, if you're wondering what website that is. Um, great free site, lots of alpha. So you can see that right here. This is the funding rate. I believe this is uh, normalized, but... This is the funding rate, and you can see all the way up here, right before the crash, yep, reporting in at 0.93. For those of you who aren't familiar with what this means, this is what perpetual positions are paying to stay open. When that funding is positive, that means longs are paying shorts, and when it's negative, shorts are paying longs to stay open. Uh, this is crazy funding, 0.1. This is paid every eight hours, so you pay this three times a day on your margin cost. That would put you at about 
of your position every 24 hours, completely unsustainable. Annualized, that's like over 100%. Uh, that when we see things annualized over 100%, what that means is lungs can't possibly stay open without adding over that course of time. So the higher this is, the faster it closes out. Uh, long positions, true. same is true when it's negative. Closing out shorts. But you can really see the difference here. We had kind of a climactic event of those longs building and they just all got shut down. So I see this as the board being reset. The trend being allowed to kind of re-blossom here and uh, find its new groove. So on the day, I do like this wick. We did touch through yesterday's fair value gap on the day, this clean open close of candle. We already touched that. So this is a solid, this is a potentially very solid place to, uh, to look for continuation into the weekend. So let's throw this on our chart, 26.8. We'll take today's open because this is obviously going to be the battle here. We had a wick low. Bears came in. Profit takers came in. They pushed price down. Bull said, I don't think so, buddy. Uh, you're not getting you're not getting those discounts, and they bought it back up, and that is this wick here. As the bulls continue to eat through these cells, they will push back to the daily open. And if I was a bear, and if I was looking to short, that's probably where I'd look to short. Uh, speaking of that, we probably could put a short position there. We could probably do this. Let's see, something like this. Remember, guys, none of this is financial advice. Only copy me if uh, you want to lose money. If you like losing money, do your own, do your own homework. Just uh, take whatever value I can give you out of this. So let me take a peek here. Ooh, nice 618 touch. I like that. I like this. Using our fib tool, our move from 42.5 brought us directly down to our golden pocket, the magical, mystical 618. Sitting right there at 43.1, we did tap it. And that's where price reversed. I do kind of like what's building here. If we can see this continue up to 44.2, that's going to be a nice little V, what is it, vector V shape recovery. I'll take it. Uh, 44.2 being the, I think, obvious entry for a short, potentially even for a hedge. Uh, basically, I'd use January 5th stop. I think that might be a little tight depending on how this trade would be approached. If you want a lower risk to reward, you could probably target over 45. Um, and basically, that'd be playing the move to the downside. Looking for a long, we might have to wait a little bit. I think right before the show was the entry for today, 43,160. By the way, guys, please, I didn't even do, I didn't even say anything today. Please take just one moment and smash the like button. It helps the stream out. All the engagement that you guys bring to these lives is the reason YouTube keeps showing them to more people and our channel continues to grow. We blasted through 90,000 subscribers last week. Now we're at 90.3, so we've already gained 300 in a few days. Let's keep up that momentum. Subscribing is engagement, liking is engagement, voting in polls, chatting, sharing the stream, all those things really helps. It's not placebo, so thank you. Um, it's nice, 700 viewers. We're just getting started. By the way, sign up with my links to our sponsors. Femex, my number one crypto exchange, and Lux Algo. You'll be seeing me use their indicators all throughout the stream. They're the best in the biz. They're the best in the biz, baby. Speaking of that, I actually want to pull this up. Give me just one minute to pull up price action concepts. There we go. Zoom it on down. This indicator, price action concepts, uh, takes live order block data. I like it. I like it. We got a little hit to this order block. We saw plenty of buys giving us this wick. And of course, setting overhead resistance 45.3. Above there, actually, probably. Yeah, it makes more sense as a stop loss for a short, actually. Um, being our next order block, let's see. I can't really see this. Uh, my text is a little small. It's uh, significantly larger. There's significantly more orders at 45.3 versus down here at 42.8, about double. That's some fresh liquidity. That's liquidity market makers are likely looking to sweep up, even if it rejects there. So maybe that's actually the better, more patient potential short entry. Just kind of going through, figuring it out as we go. Are we on log? Why does this fib look weird? I don't know. Weird fib. Just is what it is, I guess. All right, that's looking nice. 
I'm just waking up too. Don't worry, everybody. It's Friday. It's Friday. 15 minute. Nice. I like this view up up. I like momentum at the momentum pinching green dot and money flow rolling over the zero line. Uh, little really weak bullish divergence here. Nope. No bullish divergence on very low time frames there. Actually, pretty, pretty non divergent. This is interesting. So, price action is really closely mirroring RSI. Uh, we're seeing our highs at our highs with RSI. We're seeing our lows. This was the big wick. And then we're seeing a consecutive series of lower highs. And that's all being reflected on RSI. So a lot of the time people use indicators and they have to find something. They find a signal. They have to find uh, it's bullish divergence, bearish divergence. Sometimes you don't have any of that. And that's where I think a lot of new traders get confused. And they say, what, what do I look at? Well, there are times where there is no divergence. And I would say, we're on the 15 minute, I would say this is one of those times. If you look back here, yep. Actually, there's a little bear div here, but point still stands. Lowest point in price, lowest point in RSI. We see these highs coming down. We see them coming down in RSI and our lows coming down. We see them in RSI. So it's just mirroring. It's no divergence. That's a long, uh, long explanation for something. I think it's important. That's why I wanted to say it, but uh, long explanation for not a really big conclusion there, just a nothing burger. It is okay to have no divergence. That's maybe the best part of this that I'm getting at. Well, five minutes, still leaning bearish. I don't think that is going to 44.2 yet, or maybe not during this stream. Let's take a peek here. Uh, during this stream, probably 43.8. Just back to our 6.18, like clockwork. Every time we see a move, once we start sensing using our Jedi forces, now our charts and our feels. Once we start feeling that reversal, that's when we look for a 618 or a 0.5 retracement. We're not quite to either of them. Uh, so that would start 43.733 and land us just higher at the 618. So here we are. Here we are. That's what I'm looking for, provided I don't see anything really, really ugly. Now, nah, one minute's, one minute's on track with me. Five minute order blog right up there, 44. Wrapping around 10, 30. Yeah, I didn't. I don't like this either. 30 minute looking to roll over here. A series of lower highs on our money flow. Not the most bullish. Not the most bullish right now. Of course, that can change, especially if there's some very big announcement after the market's closed today. Uh, all this will go right out the window. All these targets. Nice. I like this little gumdrop on the one minute. Basically, money flow trickling into negative money, leaving this pair just to be bought right back up. VWAP's above the zero line. Momentum's pinching. VWAP's there. I like it. I like it. Uh, five. Can see a little one hour, very, very local support here. Maybe going to come back and test it. If we are looking for a long today, which I might not be. For once in my life, I might not be. But if I was... If we are 43,250 right down here, unfilled. I like that. That's probably looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah. You can see this. Something like that, maybe coming on down. And then I think throughout the weekend, depending, I think we move back eventually. We move back to that 45,3, test that liquidity. All right. All right, I, I've been in the habit of just doing like long tirades of speaking at the beginning of these, and I've enjoyed it. I like it, but it's Friday. I'm not trying to do any work. You guys aren't trying to do any work. It's Friday. So there we go. There we go. Be like Oliver. What's up, Oliver Providence? How you doing, brother? Piotr. Piotr? Grigo? Piotr? I'm going to start up the treadmill here, guys. I'm not about to start tweaking. I promise. I'm just... Going to start walking very slowly. Here we go. Standing is very difficult. Walking is much easier. I love this under the desk treadmill. Just got to get the speed right. All right. What's up? Uh, I already got Pewter Grigio. I don't know how to say that one, but I appreciate you, man. I'm sorry if I can't say your name. What's up? Jonathan Aponte subscribing. Nagarjun Gaparapu. I think I hopefully I got that pretty close. Good to have you, brother. Thanks for joining the fam. There's only there's under ten thousand under ten thousand people can subscribe to this channel before we hit hundred k. Monumental, monumental. What's up, Lee? I always miss your super chats. I don't know what's up with alert box. I don't read them anymore. I'll have to troubleshoot that. 
But thank you for the super chat. Yo, Tom, what's happening? Quick update. Coinbase just verified Jesus coin. And that it's, uh, it's listing meets criteria. Just saying God bless. Well, God bless you, my friend, Lee. I appreciate you being here super chatting every day. I hope Jesus coin brings you the miracles that you're looking for. I know it's done well. I know you've been here since back in the day when we looked at it and I was like, oh, it's probably going to pump. And then it pumped his brains out. Cheers. Uh, let me see other subscribers and let me get to the chat. Mr. Nair subscribed. Z Dubs. What's up, Z Dubs? Coco. Mal, Malunatic. VJ Kuzier. Mohammed Elias. A name in Korean or Chinese I cannot name. Cannot say. I don't even know how to start. What's up, Steve Z? Subscribed a little bit ago. S Pyrex, S and V Venom, and Pran Priyach. Just some interesting names. I appreciate every one of you. If you did subscribe, join the Discord. Keep up with our live streams and community. All right, let's turn our attention to the chat. But keep the subscribes coming. Keep joining. I want to shout you out. In the chat today, I see Absolute Interference, Arden R, Artificial Intelligence, B Team Crypto, Baby G. What's up, Baby G? Cactus Leo. Cactus Leo. I know how to read. What's up, Chemo and Crypto Bad? Crypto Bad Fox. What's up, Ace of Hearts? How you doing, man? Uh, D Gen Pepe. What's up, D Gen? Daniel Leishman. Dino Mike. How you doing, Dino? By the way, we do have our first patron night of 2024 tonight. Tonight. There's still time to sign up. Get learnt, not burnt. Invest in yourself. Upgrade your trade, whatever tagline you want to hear. Join our patron. It's, uh, it's not a signal group. We're more of a holistic crypto success community. There are trade setups that are exclusive to the patrons, but that's not what it's about. It's about much more value than that. There's still time to sign up and join us tonight. And there are some discounted memberships still available. Patron.com slash Tom Crown. There you go. What's up, Angela? How are you do How are you this morning, darling? Big Don 25, Catalin Stosia, Charles Charles P 360. You got to get some more res uh, get a little more resolution, Charles. 360P is not not very clear. What's up Christopher Stars? Crypto Domus, how you doing, friend? Uh Dr. Crypto Erico X, Aaron Pim, Foxy Thorny, my man. How you doing, Foxy? Garrett Hoffman, Gert D Liu. Getting some bread, getting, getting some bread. How you doing, man? Gold 13 Dragon. Good to see you as always, my friend. Jer great and powwaz. Hossa face. I hossa face too. Ha <laughs> ha. No, I'm just kidding, man. Good to see you. I don't know, Mang. That's a good name to follow that up. I need my cod, Jack and a crack. Jeremy Choco, J Crypto. Quicker. Liquidated Shorts joining us today. How you doing? MV Muhammad Rafiq. Jose Rin Salzalar. Hendrick. How you doing, Hendrick? What up, my guy? Uh, who else is here? Mama Jedi, one of my favorites. MF Na, Mighty Mighty, holding it down as always. Mike Bennett, Mustafa L. Deeb, Nicholas Horak. Man, this, this list just, it gets longer. Every time I read one, like two of them get added. No Way Man, Onward VR Shooting Action, Gl Orange You Glad, Polar Bear Man, Rab Rabido, Rawl, Statchel Thals, Sino DB, Shep Jones, what's up, Shep? Good to hear from you. Uh, I don't know if I replied to your last message. Solar Miner. How you doing this morning? Stupid Bitcoin. Uh, that's, a that's a relatable name. <laughs> that's pretty relatable. Suzuki, Sin, Sarkany, Mylan, Tito Gaines, Tornado, Trade Intuition. Go check out Trade Intuition's channel after the live stream. V Pol, V Polk, Warren McCarty, Watoshi, XMMGX, Zor Yuko, and probably more people I missed. They're in alphabetical order. They pop up. I did my best. Who's moist? I don't know, man. Are you moist? I'm a little moist. I'm, I'm a little sweaty. Just a little bit. The right amount. <sighs> Y'all take the time to get your portfolio in order before the market goes insane. Then have a plan if it dumps or keeps pumping. Crypto, bad fox, wise words. Wise words on this channel. We always have a plan. If we don't have a plan, we don't take action. Degeneracy can be fun. And I think that it is a part of trading. It's not a required part, but a part of even a responsible trainer should have trader should have a little degen in them, have a little piece allocated to that really high risk reward. But no matter what, having a plan is number one, no matter what to succeed here plan. What's up, Nicholas Arena? How you doing? What an ETF approval means for all coins, star candy. Uh, you know, this is something I actually want to talk about. Thank you. You're distracting me from the chat already. Adventurous angler. What's up, pimp? What's up, man? Uh, something I wanted to rant about. 
I hear a lot of people ask this question, but I also on Reddit, on Twitter, I see a lot of people talking about altcoins and the ETF. And this has been a little bit of a disconnect for me. I don't exactly, and maybe chat, you can share your thoughts with me. Give me a little more insight because I'm a little, I'm disconnected from, from the uh, newer mindset of uh, investing and trading, unfortunately. Um, I hear a lot of bullish talk about it. Now, I, I'll be fair and say, okay, with ETF, if there's a new on-ramp of uh, value, money entering the space, that space affects the whole crypto market and you know, a rising ship. A rising tides raise all ships. I don't know, something like that. I can see that. But it's interesting how much specific talk I hear about, say, like XRP and the ETF for Bitcoin. So I don't understand, and this is what I want from you guys. I don't understand why you would be bullish on alts for an ETF approval. I did acknowledge the, the value entering the space thing. However, here's the thing. That money is specifically going into the ETF and specifically into Bitcoin. It is going into almost its own pot, kind of like how GBTC, Grayscale's trust operates. It goes into its own pot of value. That pot of value, at least right away, will not really trickle out directly. There are indirect things like people being able to arbitrage and like selling their ETF shares, buying spot, things like that, uh, but they're not direct. I'm curious what the thought process is because personally, and I am no ETF expert, so please don't think this is some real, you know, guaranteed reality because I don't know. I want your guys' feedback. Uh, I kind of see it as bearish for most things. Now, bearish, I don't mean crash, go to zero bearish, but I think it is logical when an ETF is approved that we will see dominance rise on Bitcoin. There is a new funnel of value only going into Bitcoin, and it's pretty much trapped there in the ETF. It can't trade freely like it does on exchange. Now, I can see people say, oh, well, my coin will get an ETF. XRP is going to get an ETF. Maybe. Look at how long it took Bitcoin to get one. I will say it, it won't take as long for others, and there will be others in the future. But I just don't get it. I don't really get it. So I'm curious, if you put your thoughts in the chat, I'm going to read them here in just a tick. Or just right now. Let me see. Soul in reverse now. No. I didn't get an alert for soul, so it can't be doing anything too bad. You'd bet five soul that you get a soul ETF in the next five years. All right. I mean, you go ahead and bet it. You, know, you guys want to hear a really hot take that you're not going to expect, but then after I say it, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense for Tom. I got a really hot take on the ETF. Just the ETF cloud of ideas that I don't think anyone else has ever said. This might be a brand new sentence on the internet. This may never have been said by anyone. Put a one in chat if you want me to share it. You see my sneaky ways of engagement? <laughs> XRP is the only one that's not a security for sure, but Bitcoin's not a security for sure. I'm not making any comments. There we go. One's in chat. You're all going to hate it. You're going to regret it, but keep putting them in there. Zero. That's right, Rodney. <laughs> Let's get some money. What's going on? All right, all right, all right. 1,000. Thank you, Satchel. So here's my hottest take that you've never heard before, and I am very confident no one's ever said. I believe the second ETF approval, whenever that is, so we don't even have the first one, so we're getting ahead of ourselves. Timeline, throw it out the window. I think the second ETF approval will be for a coin that you would never guess. I'll pull it up. Here you go. One of the most disappointing coins this year, and maybe even last year, Litecoin. I would bet, I'll bet five Litecoin. <laughs> I'll bet five Litecoin with an imaginary second party that Litecoin is the second ETF. I believe Ethereum obviously has the second, you know, the best chance of it being the second, but I think that Ethereum after the proof of work departure or the merge I'm not convinced they'll get a second. Not convinced. I think that that shift to that model without getting into it, I think that the government will need more control. They'll want more, uh, you know, whatever it's called, certified blocks of, of transaction filtering. I don't know. I think Litecoin 
You can think I'm crazy and I know the reactions before I said it, I know what they would have been. But Litecoin has been included since the beginning with Bitcoin in almost everything. The model of consensus is exactly the same. The protocol is exactly the same. They're the same thing. You know what might even be more mind blowing here? Assuming Ethereum doesn't sneak in there and take two or three. The third one, I'll bet, I'll bet on this too. Doge. Drop the mic. Dogecoin. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. Whenever this happens, whenever it happens, whether it be now or years from now, that will be the day. That will be my day after all these years. And of course, those are, I hold those bags and I believe in those coins. So I am a little biased, but it's, I don't believe it's the bias speaking. I don't think so. If you look at the induction or the, just how Bitcoin entered into different things in the world. Um, for instance, uh, Grayscale made like an index long ago and Grayscale at one point only had Bitcoin. Number two has always been Litecoin. It's always been Litecoin. Um, Coinbase put out like, I think it was indexes or kind of like portfolio mixes a few years ago. And Litecoin, of course, was right there, like number two. It is always included when these big talks happen. So there, there it is. Brand new sentence on the internet. You heard it here first. If I'm wrong, oh well. <laughs> I'm not trading on it. I'm not buying Litecoin now saying, oh, this is going to happen. We don't even have the Bitcoin one yet. We have to see how that plays out first. But it, it would not surprise me at all. At all. True moon boy. You know it, baby. Unapologetically moon boy. <laughs> it's, I'm not even talking about price. I'm not even talking about it being bullish. This is like just a, an observation of mine. If they do approve or when they approve the Bitcoin ETF, you have things that are exactly the same. They're just a second network. Those things, I believe, will be the most likely to be approved. Because remember, this is a process. This is a very slow process, and it's a very conservative process. We've seen how long this ETF has taken already. It's a very conservative process. They don't want to take risks. So what do you do logically? If the Bitcoin ETF works out, they're happy with how it moves, you look at the things that are the same. Then you move into the things that aren't because that's a whole new gamble. It's a whole new risk tolerance. It's a, it's a whole new thing. I don't know. You don't have to like the take. You don't have to believe it. I just, you guys wanted me to share it? I shared it. There we go. All right. I'm just chilling. It's Friday. We're all chilling, brother. Just like uh, Johan Mobile's chilling. How you doing, Johan? Welcome to the crew. Tino Du Potel. Tino. I've never heard that name. Tino. Welcome, Tino. Thank you for subscribing, my friend. Good to have everybody. Opinion targets for chain link. Brian says, dump your Litecoin for XRP. Brian, there's literally not a single human on the planet that has Litecoin that is going to dump it for XRP. I don't want to break, I don't want to burst your bubble. It's not anything about XRP. It's mostly just about the profile of the people who hold Litecoin. People who hold Litecoin have been in the space an incredibly long time. Uh, if they were going to dump it, they would have. That is truly how I believe. I don't think there's a single person who has been holding Litecoin for like five, six, seven years. And right now it's like, oh man, I, uh, I better dump it. I think people in Litecoin are married to their bags at this point. It's like a moon or doom i don't i don't think that they're uh they're gonna sell now and if they did i i think it would be into bitcoin i i like coin i've never met a single person who is a litecoin person and an xrp person never they're kind of they're kind of exclusive of each other almost they're just very different i'm not making any claims about either of them I'm not saying one's bad or good or whatever you guys know my opinion yeah i just don't see that happening Chilling because it's negative 31 Celsius. What the? Gogoplex, what is that? What is that? Where are you? Are you in the Arctic? Like, are you in, are you in like Antarctica? What is that? Just buy Satoshi's Mama Jedi with the alpha. You're right. Just buy, just buy Satoshi's, man. Liquid, how much did you snore? Dude, why? What is with being on the treadmill and people thinking that you're on drugs? I'm on a treadmill. <laughs> Like, watch, watch, ready? Am I no longer on drugs now? 
need to turn it off. Walking while you're streaming is... If you don't know, you don't know. Let's look at what's moving. Up on the hour, Lido, Sui, Beam. This is, Beam has been up on the hour as a top gainer. Like almost every time I look at it, but I don't think it's actually made much progress up 9% for the week. It's weird. I guess that means Beam has a lot of volatility right now. The 24 hour volume, not that high, but plenty for people like us. Um, my, I wouldn't trade it just because the cap's small, but yeah, it's weird. It's always up there. Quant hovering at 120. Caspa in the top 100 at number five for the hourly gain. Arb. Back under two dollars. Celestia fifteen forty. Ordi at seventy one. Tezos under a dollar again. HNT at five sixty. Yikes! Hope you guys took profit. On the day gate. I don't know what gate is. Low market cap. Token. I don't care about this. Don't care about that. Osmo up point two. This is what's interesting. When I woke up this morning, I sorted my. I sorted. I have the Coin Gecko app on my phone. I sorted by biggest gainers by the day, and I was like, wait, is the is it lagging? Is it bugged out? Because looking at this, there is only, I mean, realistically, I don't, I don't know if Gate is Gate.io's token. If it is, three exchange coins, which I don't care about their price action, I don't think. I, I think it's totally inclusive to, uh, to the exchange and they basically control it. Osmos is the only one that's even slightly up over the last 24 hours. It is not a great sign when you organize by biggest gains by the day and Tether and Die are in the top few. This is like the cutoff because they're always going to be at, bi at virtually zero. Biggest losers, though. There we go. Talking about Beam down 12% yet up on the hour. Optimism down to three. Down to 335. Actually, that's not too bad. That wasn't as high as I remember. Render at four. Bonk. It's a bloody Friday, it seems. Alt's taking it to the knee. What's trending, though? SEI, Celestia. What's Myro? 73 million market cap. I don't know. Tectum still up here, still trending. Solana, of course. We'll take a look at Solana. We'll look at SEI. We'll take a look at a few of these charts. Bitcoin being boring, taking the, the slow route, it seems. Chilling out. Let me pull up Sol. So, ooh, some super chats. What's up, Will? Will, with double super chat, I doubly appreciate the double super chat. Or maybe it's just showing twice for me. I'm not really sure. It was just showing. Wait, no. He says, ICP has the best tech. Only BTCF and ICP has good tech. Everything else is antiquated narrative and just a shitcoin. Everybody's got their own beliefs. Everybody has their own way of seeing the market. I mean, I, I don't know. Is, is this a best tech competition? For those of you who are around pre-2019, maybe. Any of you who are around then, uh, how many narratives did we hear in that cycle in 16 17 cycle like how many uh this tech uh this uh, bitcoin's done uh. how many of those coins are doing well i don't know man i'm not sure if narrative i i caution people against narrative investing i think narrative investing is just like degeneracy plays which is not necessarily a bad thing but i don't think that your long-term investing schedule it makes as much sense to do that it just doesn't seem like the tech matters. It seems like you can have all the tech in the world, but if no one's using it, who cares? I don't know. That's my take. That's my take. What's up, Siba? Dave, get walking again. No slacking. <coughs> I don't know. People think I'm on drugs when I'm walking. Oh, well, you know what? People like to watch people who are intoxicated, so we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll keep it going. Someone named Tom Cohn just DM'd you on Discord. No. Believe it or not, Suzuki, I did not just DM you while I was speaking live. What you should do, if you get any weird DMs, if you get weird DMs on uh, the Discord, which you should join, please uh, let us know. But what you should do is click their profile and see if they're actually on our server, because if they're not on my server, I can't do anything about it. But I will never DM you on any platform and i especially will never dm you to ask you about money trading like whatever it's not going to happen what will happen is scammers will dm you and ask you about those things under my name i wish there was something i could do about it but all we can do is report them like i don't know platforms don't seem to care you have to be careful 
You have to be careful. Let's look at Soul here quick. Uh, Soul did get the close when we streamed on Wednesday. I said Soul closes above a hundred. What, 100, uh, yeah, 100 ish? I don't know, right around here. That would get a nice little rally. We did have a good candle yesterday, but it looks like it did get rejected. Now, Soul back to testing that same level, not looking quite as bullish. Yeah, but if you hold on to 87, that's not the end of the world. Uh, money flow not looking so hot as well. Hmm. We do have this little ascending channel here. If Soul does break its low, you do have a chance of finding support. At this point, that'd be like 81, 82, 81, 82. The whole market, it just looks like is waiting for Bitcoin. It's like, Bitcoin, are you going to 50K or are you dumping back to like the 30s and we're just going to follow you? That's really kind of what this looks like here. If we want to rehash $75, we did, we did take a position from $75. 139 did not hit yet but you might get another shot actually if you're a bull on soul you might want to be rooting for that 75 dollar hit that could be a very strong support that could bring you to the next level however we're still in the same position so if today closes over 99 or 100 that's support holding there at that psychological level and i'd be looking for 137 sooner rather than later let me see Hmm. Soul's just not an interesting chart to me right now. Like Soul, Soul moved up. It didn't hit 137. I think it will. I still think it will, even if it moves back first. Um, on the week, you have a nice order block for support right there at $75. We've been caught a bunch of times this cycle looking for these lower resistances to be tested as support like back here at 50 it didn't happen it may not happen again here in soul at 75 but if it does i think there is a very clean good risk to reward play to be made there for the right trader and i'm gonna let you figure that one out i'm not i'm not gonna put it up there not even gonna try bitcoin chilling still um what else do we want to look at let's get a little consensus from the chat what chart is everyone looking at what is it what is it meme Avax, you sold your soul to soul. You sold your soul to soul, you say. Interesting. How much, how many souls did you get for it? Uh, keep treading. Yeah, I'm treading, baby. SEI, yeah, SEI, that's the one I was thinking of too. SEI. Nazidio, $2 super chat, alt season soon. I uh, we'll see. I, th I was just ranting about the ETF. I don't think the ETF is a uh, old season fuel personally. I don't personally think it is, uh, but I know I think it, I think it's waiting for Bitcoin to move and likely when Bitcoin does move, even if it's down or even if it's up, likely alts are going to pull back to previous support. We see that happen a lot. Bitcoin moves up. Maybe there'll be one or two exceptions, little one-offs that go the other way or move with Bitcoin. But typically Bitcoin moves, everything else dumps. And then when Bitcoin kind of chills and recovers, we see alts put on or take those gains back, right? Uh, that happened really clearly, I believe, over the last few months. I'll look at that actually right after SEI. SEI did hit 78.5 and my sell order did fill money in the bank. This is how I do all of my trades, man. Limit orders. This is all my best trades are just limit order spot. Hit seven, 78.5 cents. That was our 1618 extension. Next upside targets, assuming support holds here for SEI, which who knows, uh, we'd be looking at a dollar, nice psychological value, obviously, or our measured move target, which is at $1.28 or $1.30, something like that. Um, that would be a great profit-taking target. So would a dollar. However, it does seem as if some uh, some profit-taking happened right exactly where we expected it to at 78.5. Looking down, maybe 60 cents on the day you have an order block here. The real support that I see is it at 50 cents. On your run-up, you pulled back. You didn't come back for it. That would be a nice play. Of course, if that doesn't hold, you have the previous all-time high at 35 cents. I don't know. I would, I would be careful longing this thing up so high. Um, the more centralized a coin is, the crazier the pumps are. 
because one actor or a handful of actors are controlling the supply. And when you control the supply, you control the price. So they uh, tend to see the biggest pumps, but they also tend to get the most people wrecked at the top of those pumps. So be careful. If you have a position, bravo. If not, best of luck. Wow, I'm getting a bunch of pop, a bunch of alerts. I don't know why. Not for crypto. Um, cool. Cool. Actually, this is pretty nice. SEI being one of the few here that maybe doesn't have bearish divergence on its high on the day, just snipping that high by a little bit. But the good part about that is on the daily, that is eliminating the bearish divergence that was forming on the day. And that's actually a pretty kind of bullish sign there. What is this? Look at the weekly RSI of, of this coin. I wouldn't, I, I think touching this is going to lead to sadness in the future. Look at this coin's RSI. Its first point of RSI was all the way up at like over, uh, overbought, like 71. This thing has only existed on overbought. Be, be careful, fam. There's going to be a lot of tears. There will be tears with this coin. I don't know when. Could still run up. Could go to $1.40. Could go higher. But there will be tons of tears eventually. It will be a, it'll be a, a wet mess. Speaking of divergence... Speaking of divergence on your highs, looking at total crypto daily market cap, I was trying to do this earlier, but I forgot. On our highs, we've been watching this and we've been painting some bearish divergence. So this is uh, the not most bullish part of this episode. That's okay. Our highs on total continue to move up with the highest point on the 2nd of January here. Looking at our RSI, we have very classic bearish divergence. One, two, three highs lower highs while price has moved up this is not the greatest look this is this is a little bearish not gonna lie um that could suggest that we're looking for a deeper retracement across the market i don't think that that would be a surprise to anyone but now that i gave you a little bearishness triple bearish divergence right on total i'll give you a little bullishness too when you go out to the weekly and you look at your highs <laughs> <laughs> the weekend look at your highs you look at your highs and you don't have that same bearish divergence so on the day you have it but the week you don't that might suggest that we are going to see some kind of retracement to the downside but that it isn't going to be super long lived as the weekly isn't showing this bearish sign our highs came up so did our rsi it's just an interesting take on the day clear as day Clear as day on the day. Triple bearish divergence. Then you go to the week and it's not there. Both of these signals are valid. Bo well, no divergence isn't a signal, but I digress. Both of these are valid. They can both be valid simultaneously. The daily is just a smaller time frame, right? So it's just a smaller move in comparison to the weekly. But typically when I have conflicting things, I do look for the longer time frame. So I am very happy that the weekly is still looking fresh, even if the daily is a little sluggish. Money flow at that previous high, despite VWAP coming down and momentum chilling out. This might suggest, hmm, hmm, might make this weekend's price action important. Uh, a strong close here. Strong close here. Might remedy a little bit of this slowing down of momentum on the week. Uh, obviously, a strong close is a little objective. So let's put something on the chart. 1.612 trillion versus 1.60 trillion. Just close that weekly as a green candle. Bullish engulf that doji before. Closing not that way is kind of ugly with the double kind of shooting star top. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think? It's Friday. What's up, skiing roster? How you doing, brother? This is your third super chat on a live stream. Well, it's not your super chat genity, but I'll take it. Could we look at Tia and ADA? Tia if only one. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'll end up doing both because it's Cardano. Look at Tia. Hmm. Tia being a little bit of a bitch, hasn't it? Isn't it? Let's get rid of it.
Hold up. I gotta update this chart a little bit. There we go. I had to look for where I got those. Good day, Tom. Could now it's working. Tia and ADA? Tia is only one request allowed. Lol. I guess it's working now. Or just like Steve's skiing roster. Rooster, my bad. By the way, skiing rooster, I snowboarded and skied for like 20 years. Been a while though. Been a while. All right, I was looking for where these measured moves came from. They came from right here. Tia has been a difficult one to chart. So we have a bunch of coins that have been in price discovery. They've broken their all-time high and have continued to move higher. We've had a bunch. However, Tia has been one of the harder ones to TA, mostly because when we are in price discovery to the upside or even the downside, we typically use our Fibonacci extension and retracement tool. Problem here is most coins that have done this have something like this. They have some period through 22 or 23 where they trended down, right? We have this. We don't have that on Tia. But if we did, we would be able to much, I would say more accurately or clearly use our FIB tool to generate some kind of upside targets for us. We don't have it. This has only been up. This is kind of a game of chicken. I see this chart as a game of chicken. It's like each buyer is like, okay, I don't want to be the last one. But we're just going to keep racing until these buyers go away. And then we're going to retrace. Um, I think that's a likely move. <sighs> Let's see. Structurally, actually, still not bad. Uh, the sell-off on the third did bring you down basically to your previous low in December and then immediately broke your high. So this is looking like kind of a little bow and arrow situation. Pulling the bowstring back, letting it go. Whip sawing out positions. You've closed above the previous resistance here. That's not bad. Let me see. Maybe I'll connect our highs. Kinda. Kinda. Maybe I'll take it. Uh, you did close below the ascending trend. So actually this, I was talking about a diamond on Bitcoin. This could potentially really set up to look like a diamond, couldn't it? Something like that. You had a strong close yesterday, which probably pulls you out of the pack, out of the, out of the kind of weak pack. Same issue here on the day, all those highs. You just looked at the chart. The chart is only up, yet only lower highs in our RSI. That's not a great take on the day, but price action hasn't reflected that yet. We don't have enough history to even look at the weekly RSI. That's okay. Um, let's get rid of everything for a minute for Tia. I know a lot of people are looking at it. Tia, to this point, has only had three weeks of red candle closes. The first one, when it started trading, uh, then looks like December, and then right, maybe right into 2024. This here, this order block on the week, is the only real support Tia has minus all the way down here at its trading open. So it's like $2.30. Then you have six seventy, dollars And maybe here you're going to eke out with a good close, eleven eighty five. There's not a lot of support. That's why I said this chart reminds me of like a game of chicken. Uh, what I'd be looking for on Tia, because... Like everything, nothing goes just up forever, right? Everything has to move up and down. Nothing goes to infinity, quickly at least, maybe over time. We'll have to find out by the end of the universe. But what I'd be looking for to continue to be bullish on Tia would be this week closing above 1430, or 1413. That was last week's open. That gives you a bullish engulfing candle, just like you saw back here. And I think that would be a strong signal for continuation. If you get a close below, that's when things get a little sketchy. It's currently at 1561, so you have a good bit of buffer there. I'd say like maybe 5%. Maybe 5%. Actually, I should put that on the chart. Done. There it is. Right here, 1413, 1414, right? Uh-oh. Now, I knew that was wrong. Wait, what? I guess there's more lines there. That's very confusing. Oop, just hit the light. Hmm. I'm getting confused as to which goddamn line this is. I'm just going to delete it. It's, uh, it's a little too much. And we're going to move on from Tia. Let's see. 
All right, so it is 14. There it is, 14, 13. Closing the weekly below that line, not going to look good. I would reconsider my positions. At the moment, this is okay. What you don't want to see is these lobes break or else you start painting what could be a head and shoulders pattern on the 15 here, right? Something like that. But at the moment, this is just a broadening channel. And I would say at the top of range and price discovery, when you get a broadening channel, you're looking for the move to the upside. So watch the weekly close, $14.13. I'm moving on. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. Here we go. Here we are. Here we are. Bitcoin, as we're looking at the beginning of the episode, right about where it was, playing will it, won't it at the top of our channel. I'd like the close above. Let's just stay bully, baby. Let's stay bully. Still above. All right. All right. There we go. Bitcoin making its way to the in-stream target yet again. It's like clockwork. Where's the one from? Uh, where's the one from last stream? Here we go. Looking at last stream's TA, uh, there's a lot of lines here. Bear with me. We're looking for a move down to 42.6. It did move as low as 42. So 1.5% off. However, the move back to 44.3 did hit and was exceeded, moving up to that 45K target right here at previous support. Basically, just swinging liquidity. As soon as it hit the top, wick down, got bought up. Um, this is absolutely liquidity hunting here. But this TA worked out really well, actually. So let's hope today's goes as well. Time will tell. What's up, Vazi Papa? Subscribing while I'm ranting. How you doing? Good to see you. Jer Jerus. Jerus. Stewart. Andre Castro. Mix Archer Gaming. Benjamin Cavalli, John Mobile, I got that one right, Johan Mobile. Good names, good names. If you're sitting out there watching this stream, consider subscribing. We're live here, putting out content daily, keeping you updated on the cutting edge of technical analysis and crypto and news when it's important, but rarely is news important in my opinion. Just a bunch of nothing burgers. Uh, Want to ask everybody, is anyone here in the stream for the first time ever? Never seen this beautiful mug wearing annoying sunglasses yelling about Bitcoin. Anybody, if you're new and never, the first time you've been here, could you put a one in chat and let us know? But also put, how did you find it? Did it show up in search? Was it on your homepage? Recommended? Whatever, I'm curious. I'm going to take some water while you wait. Nice. Wow. Me, me, me. Yes, me, me. Wow. I never expect that many. What's up, XX, Dexy, D, J, Co, Alien Guru, Alien Guru. Alien Guru, are aliens real? I need to know. Hodel, J Solis, Her Lippy, get out of here. You're not new. But don't get out of here. Stay here. Boxing Focus. Nice. Kevin Deli Cole, it's Fort Ninja Glock. Get out of here, man. First time watching Octavio Rodriguez. Welcome, my friend. Welcome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Nice glasses. Thanks, Ma. Drinking three gallon water. Ma. Yeah, dude. You gotta stay hydrated. I'm a hydrate. I'm a hydration homie. You're quitting crypto. Why is that? ZYP D55. Definitely 420 Bud Monsters first time. Absolutely. What's up, Rama? Alex Rod. Vosian. Peli Photography. Wow. Wow. Homepage. Hell yeah. Look at us showing up. Number one. YouTube Bitcoin search? Let's fucking go. That's right, because we are number one. Uh, not number one in size or views, but number one in value, that I believe. Uh, for those of you who are new, this channel is different from most of the YouTubes you're uh, familiar with. We have never taken a penny to promote any kind of promotion or any kind of investment. We have never shilled anything for money. We, we have sponsors. I'm very clear about that sponsorship, when it starts, when it ends. I tell you guys every time we stream, but we've never done any of these shady things. And that's because I'm just a normal dude. I'm not super mega rich. I mean, my friends think I am, but I'm not super mega rich. I grew up with nothing. I went to college. It was a huge disappointment. A lot of debt. Did sales for years and years and years. Like I'm just a normal dude. Crypto changed my life. Bitcoin changed my life. It changed the trajectory. Before I found Bitcoin, the whole world was, this is going to sound cliche, but it was just felt like a sham. I went to school for political science. I got my bachelor's. I wanted to be in government. 
And everything I had learned over those four years has turned out not to be true. It's not how governments work. It's not how the U.S. works. Uh, I was very disillusioned and at a point in my life where I didn't believe in anything, just nothing. There was no belief. There was no hope. It was just, this is life. And Bitcoin came into the picture and it didn't change my life overnight, though. I changed my life overnight, getting obsessed with it. Uh, it took many years. It took many years and patience and pain and research and all kinds of stuff. It wasn't easy. But there is nothing that could have changed my life in the same way crypto did. And that is what I want to deliver here. We do that through charts and trading, but we also do it just through kind of folksy crypto knowledge. Sharing what has been successful for people. I have personally mentored thousand people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you count all the people who watch, God knows. But um, that is my goal, is to make people who watch this channel be more successful. That's it. That's why we're different. So hopefully you'd be interested in that and subscribe and join us. I recommend it. Of course I'd recommend it. <laughs> All right. I got, I got the rant out. I got, I got it just on my soapbox here. Uh, woe is me. Austin out of the matrix. Love your honesty. I, that is, that is one thing. I'm not always right, but I'm always honest. I will never lie to you guys. I'll never lie to you guys. I don't really know how to lie. Really. I can lie if it will like help someone else like not get hurt. It's like, oh man, you look fucking ugly. Like, I'm not going to say that. But outside of that, I'm terrible at lying. I, I just speak whatever comes into my mouth. Whenever my brain drops off, I don't have time to think of lies or I don't gather memory for that. Anyway, I, di I digress again. That is also a habit of mine. Getting off track, getting ADD. I'm very ADD. I think most people in crypto are. I most of you are. Let's look at some random stuff. Let's just look at some random metrics. Open interest, marginally down from 24 hours. Oh, there's a BRC20 to tab here now on CoinGlass. Weird. That's new. 40 sats. I've never looked at these pages, so I'm a little, a little overwhelmed. I didn't realize there were so many on BRC20 now. Look at this. Wow, it's only page one. There's 10 pages, 10 pages. There's 500 BRC 20s now. That's bonkers. 40 sats. I've never heard of Texco, Techco, DSWP rats. What is all this shit? Who cares? I'm uh, very much in the mindset of a Bitcoin maximalist with some very important distinctions of differences. One of them being, I don't care what people do with Bitcoin. If you want to put monkey jpegs on the blockchain dude and you're paying for it which you have to or else you couldn't get it there go for it knock yourself out fill the whole fill all the blocks up with pictures i don't care do whatever you want other maximalists used to think that way as well when people used to spam the network with kind of gibberish transactions uh, i won't get into it right after kind of the segwit wars Nobody cared then. Now they care about pictures. I don't know. It seems just disingenuous. I think that the maxi, the like purest maxi mindset has gotten really corrupted. And that's why I have removed myself. I'm just a guy who loves Bitcoin now. Never really fit in totally with their kind of purest views. Uh, anyway, all right. Let's get reacquainted. Bitcoin chilling here. The live order block data being provided by Lux Algo. Can in live time. So this isn't data to my knowledge that is available on TradingView. This is sourced elsewhere. Um, right up here, right up here at resistance, potentially hitting a higher low. I think we move up here today. This is what I'm looking for. Still talked about it at the beginning of the uh, stream. It's been a little bit still looking for this, hoping we don't get that downside. But if we do, I'd feel much more comfortable looking for a scalp here from 43.2. Then right here at 43.6, hoping it goes up. I think your probability is way lower. Oops, way lower. Longing right here, right now versus trying to snipe a good position. Patience always pays in trades. That said, hopefully it goes up now. Hopefully. I've had no music on this entire stream. That, it's been kind of spooky. It's been a little spooky. We got 10 minutes on the hour wrapping up the hourly fighting for a green close after a bullish engulf right there let's see if it's got let's see if we got what it takes well if i said oh going along here the probability is lower than the candle goes up that's just how it goes 
I still, I still wouldn't long here. I'd still wait. Ooh. Here's a cool name. Vosian. Vojivinek. Vojivinok. Voji. Novik. That's a cool name. You sound like a wizard, dude. I love wizards. What's up, JC? Can I like an elf? Uh, I'm not going to do a huge chart breakdown on it. I think this is what we're going to do. When people want to look at stuff that's like kind of not maybe interesting to everybody else. Low market cap stuff. Uh, 95 million. I think we're just going to pull them up on CoinGecko, right? I think that's the smartest thing to do. What's he trading at? Dollar forty-five. At thirteen cents in October, it's already ten x. Not bad. It's available on Gate, Uniswap, Mexi, of course, Bitmart, Trade Ogre. It is on the Ethereum blockchain, or is it? Or is it? No, it's on Arbitrum. Ar no. Alfium. Okay, that is the name of it. Um, let's take a peek here really quick. Social. Yeah. They gave, they doubled their amount of followers on Twitter in one day. That's odd. What happened for them April 15th? It kind of looks like they bought kind of looks like they bought them. You can see a much more organic growth in their Telegram group. Developer. Does this have no coders? Does this have no devs? No commits? Their GitHub is empty? That's not a good sign. Oh, wait. Why does it say that if there are? I okay, guess got 7, 10, 12 people. GitHub is not my professional, not, not my strength. All right. I've kind of already spent more than I wanted to on it. Markets, there you are. Here's what I can tell you, my friend. At a $100 million market cap, you're looking for a really big risk to reward. I wish you the best with it. If this thing, here we go, we moved higher. If uh, it continues to make progress, it'll show up. We'll, we'll end up charting it for sure. At this moment, not going to chart something under 100, 100 million. Nothing against that, whatever that is. What about the Riot stocks? I haven't looked at Riot. You know, that does give me a good, uh, I didn't do this in the beginning of the episode. I almost always do. I didn't look at the dollar and like NASDAQ and S&P. Dollar did hit a higher high today. Wow. You know, the, the theme today feels like a diamond, doesn't it? Look at the dollar hitting a higher high. This is just what Bitcoin did, except Bitcoin did this on like a daily time frame. Hit a higher high, immediately went and broke the lows of your range. This looks... Like a diamond forming, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I like it. I would like there to be a diamond. I would like there to be a diamond here. Is this more like this? Something like that? Does that look right? I would like there to be a diamond here because after this move up from the low at the end of the year, Diamond may be the dumping signal that we're looking for. I'm looking for a weak dollar this year. Let's see if our dollar prediction came true from just a few days ago. So close. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we looked at the dollar and said, all right, well, likely going to see 103.5. Last year's open. Very likely. Even if the dollar is moving lower, very, very likely. Uh, we've gotten extremely close extremely close with 103.1, 103.5 right about up here. Uh, if this diamond does not play as a reversal, I would be looking for 103.5 as the upside, and I would likely then be looking for that move to move back down. Uh, time will tell. The dollar is very difficult to chart. I don't know if anyone thinks otherwise, but the dollar is just a weird chart, man. Almost every time you're like, oh, that's so strong. That's so bullish. It's going up. It goes down. And then almost every time you're like, that looks like death. It ends up going back up. I don't know. It doesn't seem to move like everything else. With the dollar, I do like this. Even though you hit that high, that is selling pressure. Bear is rejecting that move up. Bulls coming in, but only really taking it about halfway back up. So a reversal here. 
or any kind of lower high here that doesn't come on into this triangle pattern, I think is just continuation to the downside. Downside, which is good because when the dollar goes down, all of our other things go up. Pretty much. Yes, P500 just does not seem to be able to catch bids. It did break its low. It's kind of hanging out here though at the low. Um, using our Fibonacci extension and retracement, we might be looking at 4,600. That would be the two measured move. And it would also be the previous all-time high that we sat under for a very long time. All of 23? No. No, no, my bad. Not all-time high. My bad. Swing high of July in this year. I was going to say, wait a minute. We didn't have an all-time high that recently. Here we are. Wouldn't it be a bad move? Could find support there. And launch. It's weird to me that the S&P, this seems weaker than NASDAQ right now. Isn't it? Well, actually, let me, let me, before I say that, because I don't spend that much time looking at these. There we go. There we go. NASDAQ, I guess it moved down more, but uh, so here, here is some really, I think anyone can see this reasoning. So there we go, right here, right? Measured move target, 16.3. I don't know if I trust this as a reversal yet. Need to see a strong close today. But right on down to that measured move target, I'm looking at least for it to return, let's say 16.7. S&P on the brink of that move, it seems, right? Maybe it doesn't happen, but using that exact same stuff, we'd be looking down here. I think that that's likely. Uh, so that moves down. Dollar probably moves up in that scenario. Maybe to the 103.5. Maybe. <sighs> do, do, do. All TF tickers are now on DTCC. And, and that's great. That's great. But like, we've already had that drama. We've already had that pump and dump of the DTCC site like guys the best practice the best thing you can do if you're thinking about the ETF the best thing would be to stop thinking about it but that's not how thinking works uh, the best thing you can do is to just accept that we're not gonna know we're not gonna have this magic guaranteed date in the future it's just not gonna happen it is going to come but it's not going to be like, we're not going to know. You're not going to get a long in or like get a short in and like play it. Like, dude, just throw that idea out. That's crazy. It's almost certainly going to happen just, just like at the end of a trading day or something. Not, it could be today, but like at the end of a day, probably on a Friday, like into the weekend where markets aren't trading, it'll give people time to think about it and cool down, temper expectations. It's not going to be like, yeah, we're going to approve it at the end of the day today. Everyone, you know, use that as an insider information and trade. It's not going to happen. You're way more likely to get wrecked. Like, what do you think all the people longing back here, they all got wrecked on that wick. Like, they thought the ETF was coming. They didn't. We're not going to know. It's okay, though, because it is coming. It's, it's inevitable. It's coming. It doesn't have to happen today. But just stop trying to chase it. Stop trying to, like, make that your, your core. Just look at the chart. Look at this. This is a really simple chart. Very easy for anyone to understand, right? Green, bullish, yellow, caution, red, bearish. Here we are. That's all you need. No matter what happens with the ETF, there you are. There it is. Bitcoin right now is not signaling that an ETF like, isn't coming, right? Like, oh no, they're never going to do the ETF. We probably would see this happen. This would break before we knew that. News follows charts. Charts, I don't want to say they predict news, but they kind of, they do. They do predict. They're just not specific. Here we are, Bitcoin very slowly and unsatisfyingly making its way to our in-stream target. Very unsatisfying. One minute and 16 seconds. Let's see if we get the hourly close. Great time. Great time to like and subscribe. Just like careless Chase Carter and Stephen Wanton. What's up? What up, everybody? ETF approved, says Sammy the Bull, is it? Did it? Yeah, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. 41 seconds, we're just watching this close, baby. Just watching this close. 
I don't see anything. I don't see any Twitter spaces saying that uh, ETF was approved. So I think that was Sammy the Bull just being the bull. 23 seconds. Yeah, I don't see anything. Eleanor Terrett. We were going to have her on the channel. I think she just got a little busy. Uh, the Fox course, Fox News, Fox Business correspondent. Um, maybe I'll hit her up, see if we'll get her on again. Says, what will be interesting to see in her opinion will be whether or not the SEC approves all 11 Bitcoin spot ETF applications at once and lets them all begin trading on the same day, or if there will be some sort of staggering system, no one knows for sure. So even this expert, does, no one knows for sure, exactly. Um, forms will be 100% ready to go after today, and if they'll have any bearing on the launch date, and then she tags some people. Don't see, uh, I don't see anything. I see nothing other than just freaking rumors. Like, guys, a person very close to Gary Gensler I, like whispered in my it wrote it down on a piece of paper slipped it in my pocket and then i whispered it to someone and then that's someone like it's just it's like gibberish right let's it it's it's just nothing it's just rumors it's kind of getting annoying I'm not gonna lie it's kind of getting annoying let's check out this hourly close not bad uh it does kind of look a little reversely but you did close green i'll take it that bottom wick showing some buying pressure into the hourly close. Where are we at on the four? One more hour to the four. In this hour, let's see, 43.8. 43.8. I like it. I think in the next 58 minutes, we will see the in-stream TA play out to the upside 43.8. I think it'll happen in this four-hour candle. Basically, what I'm seeing here, you get these nice little buying wicks. You got some selling wicks. But you have, at this point, with the last four-hour close, a double bottom on your candle closes, at least to come fill this four-hour candle, 43.8. We didn't even see that while we were calculating, brewing up our in-stream trade or in stream TA, uh, we didn't even see that, but that's looking pretty dang good. That's looking pretty on point. This five minute could really look better though. Hmm. It's Friday. Did you know that it's Friday? And you know what you do on Friday? You sign up with our sponsors, Femex, the number, my number one crypto exchange and Lux Algo, the number one indicator company on trading view. They are literally the biggest indicator company in trading view. I met the founder, back before anyone had ever heard of Lux Algo and they blew the F up. Shout out to Sean Mack. Great dude. Love Lux Algo. Um, it's Friday. These articles are like listening to a weather report. Dude, Nick Duvall. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a weather a weather report. Oh, there's a 20% chance it'll rain, but there's a 100% chance it, the sun will come up. And so we think it's going to hail. We're going to have a tornado, a hail NATO. You're like, okay, sure. You've just said all the things at once. It's just not worth, it's just not worth sinking brain power into. Sink it into the chart. Sink it into, I don't know, a hobby. We're not going to know. Just accept it. Just know it's coming. Does Femex work for U.S. residents? Well, almost all U.S. residents are being geofenced by everything. Uh, if your exchange isn't getting into that, they will be. There, there's going to be, there, no one isn't going to be geofencing, I promise you. Whether the ETF is being approved now or not, what is clear is that they are cleaning up the space. And maybe I have a little insider information on this. And I say insider, but I don't even know what constitutes that. But my insider information is just my closeness with all these crypto exchanges. You guys know we've been sponsored by many. We've used a lot of them. Um, and I, I just, I know, I see it. They're all, go, they're all doing this because they're being forced to do it. So geofence is not technically restrictive of U.S. citizens. What a geofence is basically is if your IP, anyone's IP, so if you are in the U.K. and your IP is out of a U.S. person, you will be denied access to the site. Doesn't mean you're going to lose funds. Doesn't, you shouldn't panic. You shouldn't panic. Um, but as long as you're not on a U.S. IP, you can use all the places that have geofenced. Read between the lines. 
relevant and uh, maybe a hint to read between the lines is, it is 2024, this is a new sentence, it is 2024, and privacy is going to be, in my opinion, one of the core values of importance of this year, privacy. The best way <laughs> to keep your privacy private, to keep your data private on the internet, is, typing it out, to use a VPN, unrelated, right? Not related to what I was just saying. Link's in the chat. Wait, why is that link not working? That's weird. Wait a minute. No, you can still have links in the chat. I don't know what's happening. I guess maybe because my name's Tom Crown. I don't know. I'll show, you what guys, I'll show you guys what I'm seeing. I guess these aren't links or maybe, I don't know, man. I don't know. Moving on. Moving along, sir. The hourly closed. We have our data. We've talked about ETFs. I've yelled about Bitcoin and Litecoin. I've told you to join the Discord, to join our fam, to join, to join the journey with the rest of our community. Take this weekend to reflect because today is Fuckboy Friday. Take this weekend to reflect. Who have you been? Who were you? in your life. We all were many people in our lives. Who are you right now? And who do you want to be? Take time. The answer won't come easy. But when you find it, there will be nothing that changes your life more other than maybe Bitcoin. <laughs> That's it, guys. Go have a good Friday. I hope we got 420 likes. I've been all over the place today with a new setup. Go forth and blaze it. I'll see y'all in the Discord. We'll catch you Monday.